mean, sometimes you can't really find too much new ground, and it, it would just be like taking a boss distortion pedal and painting it yellow and calling it a third man distortion pedal. That's just not that exciting, you know? It's not that interesting. I mean, I think everybody in the mix wants something new to occur and new to happen, so we try to stay away from that as much as possible. That's how I'm not big on, like, you know, just as the Jack White the distortion pedal. I get that Jack White sound. That's not really, I'm, I don't really want to sell that concept. I'd rather try to make something useful that other people can get their sound out of. The first pedal collaboration we did was a Bumble Buzz pedal, and this was Chris Young out of Vancouver. He has this company, Union Pedals, that make really cool stuff, but he was sort of like a one or two man operation. And I, I love guys like that. I love people who are madmen in a garage and, and, and coming up with an idea and trying to make a business out of it and things like that. And so that always appeals to me. So he talked to us about possibly doing a pedal. I think it might have been his idea. I can't remember exactly, but I remember him coming and we had a meeting and he, he brought all of the stuff that he was putting out and I wanted something really unique. I thought if we did it, you know, it has to be very unique and a little bit off kilter, not just yet another distortion pedal or yet another boost pedal or something like that. Uh, he had this one, I don't remember what name he had on it, but it might have been a prototype, but it, it was the sound of the Bumble Buzz. I think that's it. That's that buzzy with the low octave vibe inside of it that just looks, sounds like it's going to explode or a tube's going to explode in your amp uh, feeling. And he said, okay, cool, we'll do that. What kind of parameters do you want? I said, no parameters. <laughs> I want to turn it on and off, and that's it. Don't give anybody any a, 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 a chance to lighten it or make it uh, wimpier. I want it to be this powerful. So Chris said, no problem, and uh, that was the Bumble Buzz. That was our first one. In the White Stripes, I only had three pedals. I had the Big Moffa Whammy pedal and the MXR microamp. And I think I reached out to... I think it was Digitech with the way I said, would you please make me a one that just goes octave up and octave down, that's it, like none of this other stuff. Because I keep accidentally bumping it in the middle of a song and it's going to a third and fourth and uh, harmony and stuff like that. So I, I don't use any of that. So could I make, could you make me one of those? And they said, no, we can't because uh, it's all part of one computer chip. I thought, oh, okay, well, too bad. And I think that's kind of interesting. I think that might've led to years later, us working on the triple graph pedal. It was speaking to things I specifically wanted to accomplish on stage. So Copper Sound Pedals sent me over uh, a single one of these, just one of these uh, interrupter things, sort of like a, this Morse code telegraph. And I thought, oh, how cool. And it was like uh, an interrupter. And I thought, I like this idea, but it was the weight of it was too light. So if you tried to press it, it would flip over and stuff. You had to tape it down or Velcro it down. So I thought, okay, that would be interesting. And I started thinking, oh, if I designed a pedal like that, maybe I would have made sure that the bass was extra heavy so that you could not wouldn't flop around. I started thinking, well, what else would I do with it if I was the designer of this pedal? Because I'd never really even thought about designing. And uh, it, it led to this, which was three of them to start, and the interrupter on-off switches in the middle. And this is an octave down, and this is an octave up. So this is finally getting to that spot where I was hoping to I could get my custom whammy pedal back in 2002 or four or something. And then they came back with the idea of this also being a effect scent. So when you when you press this down, it, it sends to another effect just briefly, and then when you lift your foot off, it's it's gone. Which is wild if you put that through a reverb unit and you cut reverb off dead, you know. So that can be really interesting. And you can also press them all down, put your foot sideways and press them all down at once and get interesting stuff. You, you give an octave up, octave down, and cut off your original signal. So interesting things can happen with it. I'm sort of like in now in an attempt to sort of like conquer my own pedal board on stage and, and see how many things that we can sort of bring into the third man hardware world and collaborate and, and one by one, you know, make them sort of transform into to our own universe. And the next step uh, I thought was with the MXR microamp and uh, talking to uh, 
Dunlop about that. Sort of our first step of uh, wanting to split between two amplifiers. I've, I've always been using, uh, you know, like two amps, and, and usually now and for the last like decade or more, it was like the, the vibroverb, a 64 vibroverb, and, and 100 watt silver tone, and the ability to in the studio or live to go to two different places with it, um, a true stereo output. And um, so this was the, the, the collaboration, the double down, so to, the ability to, to send that signal to two different places and control the volume for each one. Very simple, but um, coming in very useful in the studio and on stage. Oh, I've been using microphones since like 97, I think, yeah. It was the first whammy pedal, uh, the more burgundy colored one, which always bugged us and always stressed that it wasn't cherry red. Uh, the, that had a, uh, a output a knob on the back of it, and that was basically my boost, uh, my boost pedal that I, I didn't realize. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I had to turn that up to get that sound. And then when when they made the new Whammy pedal, I got that and realized that knob was gone. So I needed to replicate that boost, and that's when I got the MXR uh, microamp. And um, been using it ever since. And um, I love it because it's sort of very clean uh, for a while. Then you get up here, it gets dirty and overcharged. And it's kind of great. You could almost just only, you know, I could I could imagine just doing gigs with only that. make things that are, are appealable to people in all kinds of genres. And a, a micro amp like that is, has got a, a vast appeal to, to people who, in all kinds of applications. Studio, I like, I like it when you can get something out of it live and in studio. You can get different things from it. Those, those are cool uh, moments where you can find those kind of tools. So yeah, I think the, the, the Double Down does that. You know, you can definitely, uh, you could see people using this for vocals or for, uh, you know, trying to get some kind of stereo effect out of instruments or acoustic instruments, so mic'd and plugged into it and split and things like that. The number one thing I'm always looking for when I'm walking around the studio is a micro amp and a tuner and a stereo splitting pedal. So I'm usually often grabbing some stereo chorus out of a drawer and using that to split the signal to two different things. And now I have that. It's like kind of uh, the, 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 it has the microwave and the splitter in one. So that's just very handy. I'm going to keep 10 of these around at all times. <laughs> Oh, my God. 